Hello, and welcome to this episode of Kids Say the Darndest Things. So, it was a few years ago, and I was a counselor at a summer camp, and this one kid comes up to me, and he says, Mr. Andy, black people really like Chinese food. And I looked at him, and I said, Have you conducted a hypothesis test to determine whether or not the relationship between race and Chinese food consumption is statistically significant? He said no. In this video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a hypothesis test to determine whether or not people's preference for Chinese food varies by race. So we're in the workbook 1415A Nova, and we are in the worksheet Chinese. And I'll take a little peek at the code book here to see what we're looking at here. So there's a variable called race, and the statement is, what is your race? And the three categories are black white, other, and the missing data would be don't know. And Chinese means how many times have you eaten Chinese food in the past week? And this is a number, and it's giving us also a category for don't know, no answer would be negative one. And the third variable is just some arbitrary ID number that's assigned to each respondent, and we'll see why this is important as we go along. And in this video, we're also going to learn how to construct a pivot table. And this is going to be particularly useful because the data here is somewhat less organized than the, than the previous example. So you can see the variable of interest, the amount of Chinese food that people consume, whether it's three meals of Chinese food in the past week, none, or 17 Chinese food meals in the past week, whatever this number is, there's missing data here, and it's varying by races over here. In the previous one, we would have had each race category um, in a particular column, right? So it would have been all of the twos and then their values would be listed. All of the people who are blacks, all of their values would have been listed. And all of the people who are other races, their values would have been listed. But here we're all in one column, and it's matching up with the races over here. You might think that making a data table would help, but it wouldn't really help in this case. The way that Excel 2010 uses analysis of variance, we need the data to be in separate columns. So that's why we're going to be constructing the pivot table. So let's get started with our process here. Um, what is our dependent variable? So our dependent variable is consumption of Chinese food. And this is a number, so it's an interval level variable. And our independent variable is the respondent's race. So this is categories black, white, other. And this is a nominal level variable. How many categories of race do we have? Well, as we just said, we have black, white, and other. So there are three categories. And the n is a little tricky to determine, and we'll see why as we go along. But I'm just going to put a question mark here for right now. And this problem is asking us to perform a hypothesis test at alpha equals 0 0.01. So our first step is to write out our hypothesis. And the hypothesis here is that on average, people of different races differ in their consumption of Chinese food. And our null hypothesis, I'll just copy and paste that. People of different races do not differ in their consumption of Chinese food. So our null hypothesis is that each of the population means of each of the races, their consumption of Chinese food, are all going to be equal. And our research hypothesis, um, again, as I said in the last video, what we're really talking about here is that at least one of the means differs from the others. So it might be that black people eat more Chinese food than white people, or other races eat more Chinese food than whites, or any one of those particular categories. Okay, this is what we're basically testing for with our analysis of variance. 
So we can do step two. Let me scroll down here. Our degrees of freedom between is just going to be k minus 1, which is 2. We could have done that just by typing it in. And our degrees of freedom within is just going to be n, whatever that is, once we figure it out, minus k, which is 3. This is going to give us an error message because we're subtracting 3 from a question mark, which doesn't make sense. But once we put a number in there, this will automatically update. And our critical F statistic, we'll type that in right now as well. F dot inverse right tailed. Probability is 0 0.01. Degrees of freedom, 2, and this one here. So check, this is a 0 0.01, just to make sure we're giving that the decimal points that it deserves. Now step 3 is where things start getting very, very interesting. So we want to construct an ANOVA table, but we can't do it quite, just quite yet, because we have this data is not in three columns, as I said before, of each race, the Chinese food consumption of each race. So what we want to do here, we want to create what's called a pivot table. And in order to do that, we're going to select all of our data. I'm going to hold in the shift key and tap right twice holding in shift still, holding in control, and hitting down. Now we're all the way at the bottom of our data set. We have 1,000 rows selected and three columns. We have a lot of people in this data set. And the way to create a pivot table is to go up to insert, pivot table, pivot table. And we have the data selected right here and I want to put this data into an existing worksheet and I'm going to put it right over here in cell M1 and to do that I'm going to click here and then M1 I'm going to click OK so now pivot tables are rather interesting things and for this particular example we're not going to go into them in too much depth they're going to be more useful when we do the chi-square test in the next video. But for now, just follow along, I'm going to put ID as the row label, and I'm going to put Chinese as the values, and I'm going to put race as the column label. and you can see what this has done here this is just the ID of the person so it's matching up what we have over here there is for example person number one is well, let's actually add in these right here so it was black white and other right one two and three if you want to go back to your code book you can see black white other and nine was missing data and I'll just double click to resize these okay just to make sure that we can see so if you recall over here person number one was white and he or she had three meals last week that could be categorized as quote Chinese food okay so this is telling you that person had a value of three so now what you can see here is that these values over here have now effectively been placed into columns corresponding to each race. Now there's one more thing that we want to do. If we click back in our table, the pivot table options appear. If we click away, they go away. If we click in here, we want to filter these things by Chinese because we had missing data for the number, amount of Chinese food that people had eaten. Okay, so I'm going to place that in there. And similar to the way we filtered missing data before, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click Select Multiple Items, and the checkboxes are going to appear. And if you recall from our code book, the negative one was the missing data. You couldn't have eaten negative one meals of Chinese food last week. That doesn't make any sense. This was missing data. That's why they put a negative one there, so as it wouldn't be confused with some other number. So uncheck that.
You can see there's a negative one right here, and it's gonna disappear when I click OK. Boop, there it goes. So one, two, three, four, six. So person number five was someone of an other race other than black and white, and they are now excluded from our analysis. So our next step is to create our ANOVA table. And just like before, we go up to our data tab and we click on data analysis, ANOVA single factor, click OK. So we click on this button right here and we select black, white, and other. So we have those three columns there. I'm holding in shift and I'm going to tap page down to select multiple people. If we had used um, control shift down, it wouldn't really have worked as fast. It would go in j jumps and spurts, um, wherever the expression is, and it would not have done it as well. So if you go down one extra, as you can just go up, you can do a little fine tweaking with the arrows, just arrow up and arrow down, holding in the shift key the whole entire time. So now I'm going to let go of the shift button, and I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to enter it into this box here, enter. Our alpha, we want to make sure that it's 0 0.01 because this problem is asked for an alpha of 0 0.01. We did select the labels, the black, the white, and the other. And our output range, let's select that here. We'll click, we'll find right beneath step three, right here is E35 on my spreadsheet, and I'll hit enter. Everything looks good. Our ANOVA table is going to be produced right there. And I'm going to click OK. So here we go. Now we can see our summary statistics, the number of people who are black, number who are white, number who are other. If I want to get our N, hold in Alt and hit Equals. And it'll sum these up. This is our N. So you can see that there were 999 people in the sample, 999 ID numbers, right? But there's only 934 of those were valid. So 60, 65 of them were invalid data. And this helped us to, the pivot table helped us to detect that. And it also helped us to organize our data a little more effectively so we could actually use this ANOVA table. So what we can do now is to go up to our N up in step zero and set it equal to this value here. And when I do this, it's going to automatically fix these numbers for me. So I'm going to hit enter now. And you can see that our df between n minus k, it's got that formula correct. I'll hit escape to get out of that. The same thing here, I'll hit f2 to go inside. And you can see that all of the numbers are in the appropriate places where they should be. So what we wanted from this table was our sample F statistic. And we can see that that's right here, our sample F versus our critical F. And again, one of the reasons why we calculated our critical F before was to determine, just to make sure that these are both matching up. Because if we had put in the wrong alpha, it would have given us a different number here. So we have our sample F in step three. And moving on to step four. I'll make this bold. Is our sample F bigger than our critical F, or what? So our sample F is 0.82, our critical F is 4.62. So this would be 4 is 0.8 to the right, or to the left of 4, it's to the left. So our sample F is smaller than our critical F. Therefore, we're going to go with our null hypothesis. Now, what does this mean here? So step five, our interpretation. We're going with our null hypothesis. So 
So on average, people of different races do not differ in their consumption of Chinese food. And this statement, we can report our p-value here, so the p was actually greater than 0 0.01. And if we look, we can see that our sample statistic was not in the critical region, it was a little bit to the left. If we had been in the critical region, we would have been significant. If not, it's not significant. We're going to go with a null hypothesis. So according to this data, the amount of Chinese food that people consume does not differ by race, and my camper was incorrect. Kids do indeed say the darndest things.